it's Bill Bills Mafia, the Rev here, and you are now tuned in to episode 9 of Rated Rev, right here on the Buffalo Fanatics Network. Yo, if you're still not plugged into the Buffalo Fanatics Network, do me this favor, will you? Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel with bell notifications on, so you can stay up to date with all things Buffalo Bills. Now let's dig in. What's up, Bills Mafia? Grace and peace to you, my brothers and sisters. Welcome back to another edition of Rated Rev, brought to you by the Buffalo Fanatics Network. Listen, I would be remiss if I did not start this show by first sending my prayers and my deepest condolences to the families and the loved ones of the victims whose lives were lost in a tragic and senseless act of hatred and utter wickedness in the city of Buffalo this past weekend. Just know that my family is here praying for you and no doubt Bill's Mafia around the world is lifting the entire city of Buffalo up right now. Don't think that you guys are alone in this, okay? When you grieve, we grieve. When you mourn, we mourn. When you cry, we cry. This is, this is a mafia. This is a family. I don't just say that tongue-in-cheek. I don't just think that that's just some, some cool little catchphrase. No, no, no. We are Bill's Mafia. We are a family. And we are here for one another. I may not understand your pain, your hurt, but I've been there before to a degree. My city as well, the city of El Paso, Texas, in 2019, experienced a similar tragedy where a gunman came all the way from Dallas, Texas, racially motivated and shot up an entire Walmart, killing 23 and wounding 23. So I've been there before. Thank God that I did not lose any, any, any family members or, or our loved ones. But I say that to say this. You are not alone. You are not alone. So if you need somebody to talk to. If you need an ear. Just somebody just to listen. I'm here for you. Will the Buffalo Bills finish better this year than they did last year? That's what I want to discuss on today's episode of Rated Rev. Will they finish better this year than they did last year? If we go back a couple of years ago, we all know this was when the Buffalo Bills exploded onto the scene. In 2020, they shocked the world and finished 13-3, and getting all the way to the AFC Championship game, and they were number two seed in the AFC Well, then last year took place and they had a slight regression. We all know how that fell off, how the Bills were kind of spinning the wheels earlier in the season, but they ultimately were able to get back on track, closed out the year strong, finished 11-6 and overall with the extra game um, that, that happened last year. And then they were the number three seed in the AFC playoffs. But the question is, this year, now that the schedule has been released and we've had a chance to digest the schedule and look at it, how do you think the Bills will fare in 2022? That's what I want to talk about today. And so we're going to be doing, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the schedule and go game by game and we're going to find out where we can get a win and where the losses will, uh, will happen. Look, look, I'm going to try my best to take my Bills hat off, right, and be as objective as possible when we do this. I don't want to be Mr. Homer. Okay, so you guys uh, join with me in this exercise as we look at the Bills schedule this year going into the 2022 season, and we're going to find out how the Bills will finish and what it's going to take for them to actually get over the hedge, I mean, over the, over the edge or over the hump. <laughs> I'm thinking of the movie Over the Hedge. I don't know if you guys have, have ever seen that movie or not. Anyway, what is it going to take for the Bills to get over the hump in 22? Can they finish better than they did last year? 
Can they go further in the playoffs than they did last year? And can they finally reach the Super Bowl? Let's look at the schedule. And by all intents and purposes, you know, um, we had a fairly simple schedule last year, right? And the Bills struggled. No doubt. We struggled um, in a lot of those games. But this year, the schedule is a lot tougher. And I'm pulling up the schedule right now. And we're going to talk about how much better we're going to be. Man, oh man, look. We open up the season. Season opener. NFL opener kickoff game against the Los Angeles Rams in LA man I don't know how excited you guys are about that game but I am tremendously pumped up and excited about this game we all kind of had an idea that this was was going to happen right in the playoffs last year as we were going toe-to-toe blow for blow with the Kansas City Chiefs and when we all thought we had won the game Many Bills fans and other fans, as NFL fans um, across the NFL landscape said, yo, the Buffalo Bills are this team and they're going to go to the Super Bowl. I know I said it. If we got past the Chiefs, that was it. The Bengals didn't want to see us. We were going to the Super Bowl. Bengals at home in the AFC Championship game? Are you, sitting, are you kidding me? I think we would have beat the brakes off of them. And then we would have had the opportunity to play against the L.A. Rams in Los Angeles. And I think we would have beaten them as well. We would have been hoisting that Lombardi Trophy last year. But you know what? It just wasn't our year. Things didn't go well when we thought it should have gone well. But it didn't. It is what it is. So we're moving on. And so the NFL could not get enough of that game. They could not get enough of the Buffalo Bills in prime time. And they, too, apparently wanted what it would have been like had the Buffalo Bills faced the, the Los Angeles Rams, almost had the Chiefs, in the Super Bowl. And so they give us a glimpse of what it could have looked like to open up the season against the Rams, the kickoff game. Prime time, baby. And in case you didn't know, the Bills have gotten five prime time games this year. I think the max is six. If I'm not mistaken, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But the Bills have gotten five. They got the kickoff game against the Rams. And then in week two, the Bills home opener against the Titans. Right? And then let me see here. The other game is against the Packers in week eight. So that's three. And then the Patriots, week 13, that's four. And then the, the, the Bengals, week 17 at 6.30 p.m. Okay? So that's five primetime games. But there's also other games, right, that are going to be nationally televised. We've got the Thanksgiving game against the, 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 the Lions. And then we have the Christmas Eve game against the Bears. So all in all, the Buffalo Bills are going to be in the forefront of the NFL landscape in prime time, so to speak, seven times this year. Five official prime time and then two nationally televised games in uh, uh, the Thanksgiving game and the Christmas Eve game, right? Plus, there's still a game against the Patriots that's to be determined, right? That maybe that game can be flexed. And then the same with the, with the Dolphins in Week 15. That game can be flexed. So the Bills are... are, are are sitting pretty right now. The question is, will we take advantage of this type of coverage? Right? The NFL has given us this coverage. They want to see the Bills play. Are we going to take advantage of that coverage and give them what they want to see? And it starts week one against the Rams. Home, well not home, but kickoff game in the National Football League. Oh man, and it's a and it's a traveling game too against the you know in LA. I you know 
I, you know, I'm torn. I'm torn against this, with this game. You know, I've kind of gone gone back and forth. I mean, I'm excited. I mean, we get Von Miller going back to L.A. facing his, his you know, the team that he that he uh, won the Super Bowl with last year. Man, we got Jalen Ramsey. We've got Aaron Donald. We got Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford. They just got Bobby Wagner. That team is loaded. Yeah, they lost Robert Woods. I understand that. The Cooper Cup is still no joke. Okay, still no joke. And they got Allen Robinson. I think they're going to be just fine on offense. Defense is still going to be good. As long as they got Aaron Donald, they're going to be fine. I think they still have Leonard Floyd. And then they got, like I said, Bobby Wagner. The team is going to be good, right? No drop-off, I see. But how will the Buffalo Bills fare against this defending Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Rams to kick off the NFL season? We know last year that the Bills struggled early in the season. They had a couple, a few lulls in the season, trying to get their bearings straight. Right, the the season opener against the Steelers lost that game. Okay, we had some spats throughout the the early parts of the season. The Bills cannot, man. I repeat, they cannot get off to a slow start this year. Not with this schedule. Last year it was it was easier, right? And maybe, you know, I mean, it gave them time to kind of, all right, get themselves together and get back on track. This year, no, sir. Off, right off the gate, the first six games, if I'm not mistaken, are brutal. Absolutely brutal. So what are the Bills going to do against the Rams? I think it's going to be a very good game. A very good game. But I'm going to be honest with you, Mafia. I don't, I don't know if we're going to win this one. Okay, I don't know if we're going to win this one. Yeah, I would like the Bills to win it, but I don't think we're going to win. I don't think we're going to win. Going to L.A., open up the season, you know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. And I know the Buffalo Bills are, are, are a team to be reckoned with, but I just think that this is going to be a tough game for us, and, you know, we're going to lose. So I'm going to give the Bills an L, okay? You guys, hey, don't come for me. It's going to be okay. Let me write this down. All right. So game one against the Rams is a loss. Week one, loss. Now we move on to week two. Bills, Titans. Home opener for the Buffalo Bills. Prime time. Prime time. How are the Buffalo Bills going to do against the team that they have not been able to beat in the past couple of years? Is it going to be a cakewalk for the Bills? Huh? What do you guys think? Is it going to be a cakewalk? I don't know. I don't think so. Monday night game in Buffalo Best believe it's going to be Liddy, baby. It's going to be on fire. Mafia is going to show up. They're going to show out. Especially coming off of a loss to the Rams, okay? The Bills are going to be ready. They're going to be out for blood. You look at the Tennessee Titans. They have been a tough team for us. They, we just don't match up well against them. We haven't. Over the past couple of years, we haven't. We had a good shot to win against them last year. We all know what happened um, last second, right? On that goal line play, Josh slips. Jeffrey Simmons blows up the offensive line, and it just, it just didn't happen, right? That close, that close, inches away from a, win, from a win. Didn't happen. So now we're looking at this year. We look at the Titans. How have the Titans done? So far in the offseason. Well, they lost A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown. That loss is going to affect the Titans offense, in my opinion, um, uh, tremendously. You just can't replace A.J. Brown with anybody. They say, but Rev, I know they can't place A.J. Brown with anybody, but man, they got Robert Woods. Robert Woods is a very good wide receiver. 
Don't get me wrong. I loved him in Buffalo. Love what he's done, uh, what he did in the Ram for the Rams. Robert Woods is the number two. Okay, he's a number two receiver. He's not the number one alpha dog, though he's a very good wide receiver. I'm not taking anything away from him, but he's not a number one alpha dog wide receiver. Then they added rookie Traylon Burks, who is not A.J. Brown. Very good rookie prospect, but he's not A.J. Brown. They're not the same type of receiver. They may have the same type of body style, right? I think Traylon Burks is 6'2", you know, 220, 225, something like that. Similar size to A.J. Brown, but they don't, they're, they're different receivers. Traylon Burks, you need to get the ball in his hands early, Right? And let him, and let him do, try to do his thing in space. But how will that offense gel with, with new pieces, two new pieces at wide receiver? Plus, he got Ryan Tannehill, who could be looking over his shoulders at Malik Willis. So, granted, they got King Henry back. He's going to be back healthy, right? But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not afraid of the Titans. I am not afraid of the Titans this year. I, I just don't fear them. I think that them coming to Buffalo finally, it took them long enough for them to finally come to Buffalo. Them coming to Buffalo um, under this circumstances, um, as I had spoken of earlier, of the Bills coming off of a loss against the Rams, the Bills are out for blood. They want to even the stakes, right? They, they, wanna, they, want, they want to even the stakes against the Titans. And they want to get back to 500 on the year. Playing at home, the Bills Mafia is behind them. I think the Bills are going to spank the Titans. Spank them. I don't think it's going to be a close game. That's just my opinion. I think Bills are going to be out for blood. They're going to destroy them. Okay? So I'm giving that week two a win for the Bills. All right? So week one was a loss. Against the Rams, week two is a dub for the Bills. So now we're sitting at one and one. Okay, now we go into week three. Buffalo Bills at uh, the Miami Dolphins in Hard Rock Stadium. Do we need to really talk about this much? I know they got Tyreek Hill. I get it. To go along with Jalen Waddle, I get it. Mike Kosicki, I get it. Chase Edmonds at running back, I get it. Some additions in the offensive line, I get it. But at the end of the day, do we are we afraid of Tua Tungavaloa? No, not at all. Especially when we saw him throwing that little that little pitter patter duck of a pass to Tyree Kill in practice with absolutely nobody around him. Had all the time in the world to throw the ball, to step into it, and he still underthrew him. And the ball just floated in the air. If he does that in the season, it's going to be pick city. Pick city. The defense is going to have a, have a field day with that. I am not afraid of Tua and the Miami Dolphins. We know who their daddy is. It's Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. Give me a dub week three against the Dolphins. So now that means the Buffalo Bills are two and one. Two and one on the season. Two and one on the season. Now we enter a tougher stretch. Week three. 11 o'clock kickoff on the road to face off with Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Mm. I know what you're saying. Rev, you can't be afraid of this matchup. I'm not afraid of any matchup. Rev, we, we, we beat them. We beat Lamar Jackson in the playoffs. I understand that. But I think there's a little bit of, rec of recency bias here. The, Ra the Ravens were decimated by injury last year, right? I mean, that team was like, like cursed, you know, to, to a degree, almost like right last year. I mean, they, they had injury after injury after injury. These guys could not stay healthy. And I think a lot of fans 
forgotten about the Ravens. And they think that they're just some bottom feeder team in the NFL. That is not the case. I know they lost Hollywood Brown. I know you've got this contract dispute thing kind of lingering over the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. But y'all, look, they are still the Ravens. They had a phenomenal draft for one. Defense got a lot better. Okay, they're getting J.K. Dobbins back. You know they're going to run the ball. They've got Mark Andrews. I just think it's going to be a tough matchup. I think it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough game. The Bills may have some, some, some fits early on against the defense of the Ravens. But ultimately, I'm giving the Bills a win, baby. You thought I was going to give them an L against the Ravens? I know it's a tough matchup, but I'm giving them a dub. That's right. A dub on the road against the Baltimore Ravens. Week four, give me that dub, baby. Dub City. The Bills are looking pretty at three and one entering week five matchup at home against the Pittsburgh Steelers redemption from last year. Will Money Mitch knock off the Buffalo Bills? Absolutely not. I don't care who they got back there. I don't care the weapons they have. I don't care. I don't care. The Steelers in Buffalo, week five, are going to get throttled. Yeah, I know TJ Watt's a problem. I know it. I know Cam Hayward is a problem. I know it. But we're ready for him. We're ready for him. It ain't going to be the same, the same type of game as it was last year, week one. And we're still trying to get our, our legs under ourselves. No, sir. Absolutely not. The Bills week five are ready. And we're going to spank that tail. Give me another dub. Buffalo Bills at home against the Steelers. And you think the Steelers are going to come in and win? You tripping. Week five. Dub. Man, am I getting kind of homer? I'm, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the record right now. Man. Okay, so they finished the first quarter of the season at 3-1, and and they entered the second quarter 1-0. and So now they have an overall record of 4-1 and as they enter Week 6 matchup. Week 6 matchup at Arrowhead Stadium against the Kansas City Chiefs. 2.25 p.m. kickoff. Look. We beat them dudes, man, last year at home in the regular season. And we should have beaten them in the playoffs last year. Divisional round. And that's with Tyreek Hill, Pat Mahomes on his A game, minus Tredavious White. But this year, baby, they ain't got Tyreek Hill. Yeah, they added weapons. They got Juju Smith, Mark, uh, uh, MVS. They added Sky Moore in the draft. They still have Travis Kelsey. Still got Pat Mahomes, yeah. Added Daxon Hill in the draft, if I'm not mistaken. No, 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 not Daxon Hill. They added Trip McDuffie, the cornerback, right? Lost Tyron Matthew. But we're going to be getting Trey White back. Hopefully by then, we're talking about October the 16th, right? Hopefully Trey White is back. And then you add him with Kair Elam, the rookie first-round pick, to go along with this defense that we, that we solidified in the defensive line and then the weapons we've got on offense, get ready for another, another phenomenal game. Bills, Chiefs, toe-to-toe, blow-for-blow. Who's going to come out on top? The Bills. That's right. I think we're going to get this win, guys. I really do. It's not going to be easy, but I, I think we're going to get it. And, and, and you know what? And you know what? I think the – I think what's going to help us not just win this game, but win other games this year, especially these, these tougher matchups, is going to be an improved running game. I know you don't want to hear it. I know it. You don't want to hear it. You say, Rev, we're not going to get the ball out of Josh Allen's hands and hand the ball. Look, listen. Okay, for one second. 
We're going to be a balanced team. Does that mean we're still not going to throw the Does that mean we're not going to throw the ball over the yard? No. But we're going to be more effective running the game. We have a revamped O-line, adding Roger Saffold to the offensive line, bringing back Ryan Bates. We got Mitch Morris in the center, and then we've got Deion Dawkins. Hopefully he's going to be back healthy. He's going to stay healthy. We got the rookie, well, the, now the second year pro, Spencer Brown. Come, look, the offensive line, I think, is going to be a lot better than it was last year. But we started coming along in the end of the regular season and into the playoffs, and we saw the running game start to be more effective. Now you bring back virtually the same old line with the addition of Roger Saffold, and you got a better Devin Singletary, I'm believing, coming into um, a contract season. You don't think he's going to be motivated? Yes, very motivated to get a new contract, whether it's with the Bills or somebody else. He's going to be very motivated. Then you add in the rookie James Cook out of the backfield as well. Those matchups. And I think he's going to be uh, 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 he, he's, he's not just going to be this, this wide receiving back also. I think he can run the rock okay, and provide a different element and dynamic to the running game. So we have that running game now. So when teams try to play cover two and, 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 and stop the pass, we can just hand the ball off with success. So I think that's what's going to make this team so difficult to beat this year. So when we come against to, to Arrowhead and we play the Kansas City Chiefs, if we need to slow the game down, we can do it. So I'm giving us a win. I'm giving us a dub against the Kansas City Chiefs. Man, I'm feeling myself right now. Give me a dub against the Kansas City Chiefs week six, baby. Now, the Bills are sitting pretty at what? What's the record now? Five and one. Five and one entering the bye week. Yo, that is a very good record heading into the bye week. The Bills get some rest. It's an early bye week. I actually kind of like the later bye week, but, you know, I don't know. We'll see how that happens because there's a lot of football left, and then you still have the playoffs, right? So, I mean, you've got week seven bye, and then now you come out of that bye, right? And uh, you have, what, 11 games? Man, right? Is that 11 games or 10 games? 11 games. That's, that's, that's a lot of football. That's a lot of football left to be played, and that's just regular season. So let's hope that the Buffalo Bills can, can stay healthy this year and remain healthy with that early bye. But needless to say, we come out of the bye in week seven feeling pretty good about ourselves. We're sitting pretty at, at five and one. And then we have a matchup, prime time matchup, week eight, October, the what? October the 30th, October the 30th, Sunday night in Buffalo, the lights of Sunday night football come to Buffalo and we host the Green Bay Packers. That game is going to be on fire. Aaron Rodgers and the Devontae Adam less Green Bay Packers. Coming to Highmark Stadium, Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers. Who does he? Who is he throwing the ball to? Randall Cobb. That's it. Christian Watson. There, there you go. Christian Watson. Uh, yeah. Bills. Bills. Aaron Rodgers is going to be running for his life. Von Miller is going to come all after that, man. He ain't going to have no time to throw. And when he does, he's going to be throwing picks. And he's going to get frustrated with his players like he does. When things don't go his way, he starts to pout on the sidelines, throwing the ball on the field, complaining. That's what Aaron Rodgers does. We're going to get him all out of his game. And the Bills are going to wax it again. 
primetime stage, baby. Buffalo Bills with the dub over the Green Bay Packers. Championship. <laughs> so you guys in the comments, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think so far. Am I tripping? Huh? Am I feeling myself too much, guys? Let me know. Ladies, am I feeling myself a little too much? Uh, man, because, you know, right now, I, I talked about earlier, like I was going to be objective and, and try to take my Bills hat off. But, you know, when I'm looking at it, it's like, man, I, I, I don't see us losing so far. I mean, yeah, we lost the, 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 the season opener. But, man, I mean, can we pull off six straight? It's going to be tough. I mean, yeah, right, you have to you have to think that somewhere within those games, right, so somewhere within the first seven games of the season, you know, we're going to have more than one loss, right? Or are we? I don't know, but let's just ride with it, okay? Uh, so now, 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 that I'm looking at the, now that I'm looking at our record, our projected record right now, 6-1, I, I almost feel obligated to give us an L. And just to kind of make, just to balance it out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't going to be this week. Because week nine, we go to Meadowland, to MetLife Stadium, excuse me, we play the Jets. Do we really think we're going to lose that game? I know the Jets have gotten better on paper. I know it. I know they had a phenomenal draft, as they should. When you're picking that high and you've got that many picks, you should come out on top. But they've added talent. And they've added talent to that team. What are we gonna, I mean, what are we going to see out of Zach Wilson in year two? Is he going to be better than he was his rookie year? I mean, I mean, surely he, I mean, he has to be better than, than what he was, right? I mean, he was at the, at the bottom. But they had some weapons to an already fairly talented offense. They, had, they brought back Braxton Berrios, right? They have Corey Davis. They have Elijah Moore, Right? And then they just added. They added. Who did they get? Did they get Garrett Wilson? You guys let me know. Did they get Garrett? I'm pretty sure, right? You guys, look, help me out in the chat. I know they got a receiver in the draft, and I'm pretty sure it was Garrett Wilson. Yeah, it was. Right? You're going to make me look it up, but I don't want to waste any time. So let me know in the chat. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll, I'll, I'll correct it. It's my bad. But they added talent. And then in round two, they got Brees Hall to go along with Michael Carter. And then they, they added C.J. Uzoma from uh, uh, the, the, the Bengals, the tight end from the Bengals. So on paper, they've got, they've got weapons. And they've got weapons on paper. But how will Zach Wilson do against this vaunted Buffalo Bills defense? That was number one last year for the majority of the year and to close out the year as well, who just got better. Just added more talent on the D-line. Just added Vaughn Miller. Then added another cornerback in round one in Kyrie Elam. 6'1", 200 plus. Long arm corner, fast, sub 4, 440. I, th I think it's going to be way too much for Zach Wilson to handle way too much. He's going to be like, like Sam Darnold, seeing ghosts out there. Buffalo Bills in a blowout victory over the New York Jets. Dub. All right. Now we're moving on. Week 10. Week 10, the Buffalo Bills are playing and they're hosting the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings come into Highmark Stadium to play the Buffalo Bills. You've got Kirk Cousins coming with Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson with Dalvin Cook, who gets to play against his brother or watch his brother play, and James Cook. Will the Bills secure another victory against the Minnesota Vikings? Oh, man. I don't know. Guys, I, you look, I'm just going to say this right now. I don't fear the Vikings. I, I really don't. But at some point, we have, to, we have to take an L, right? We have to take it. Just, just take an L for my sanity. So I won't feel like it's such a homer. So just for that sake, 
nothing else. <laughs> I'm going to give the Bills an L, okay? I don't think they're going to lose a game, but I think they need to lose one, <laughs> right? Because I'm looking at this and I'm like, there's no way the Buffalo Bills are going to go 16-1 and one right now. There's just no way. So I'm going to give them an L against, against the Vikings, all right, at home. It's not really going to hurt anything, right? Um, we're still 7-2. and two. That was uh, an NFC loss, so it's really not going to do much damage. Okay, but I, I'm, at 7-2, and two, I'm pretty sure that we're still first place in the AFC East, and we're probably sitting at first place in the AFC. Okay, so I'm not worried about that. But then the Buffalo Bills... Again, back-to-back home games. They host the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns. Man, this game, I mean, it's, it's really a toss-up. And I, and I like how the, how, the, how, how, how the league scheduled this game late in the season. Right? Don't, don't think they did that, you know, just by happenstance or on, it was accident. No, no, it was purposely. It was on purpose. Why? Because they want to see Deshaun Watson against Josh Allen. That's why. That, they want to see that matchup. And had they put that early in the season, we're probably not going to get to see it because Deshaun Watson is likely to face some type of suspension going into the season. right? But by week 11, he should probably be cleared with any type of uh, uh, suspensions from the league. And at week 11, I'm going to assume that it's Deshaun Watson against, jo- uh, against Josh Allen. This is a rematch, granted a different team, but a rematch of Josh Allen versus Deshaun Watson. You remember it like I do, 2019 playoffs against the Houston Texans. Josh Allen, young Josh Allen, trying to put his team on his back. He ended up losing a game, wild card round. It's all right. He made a tougher Josh. And now we're going to see him facing up against Deshaun Watson. What will Deshaun Watson look like after being out of the league for a year? What will he look like in a new team? Without Jarvis Landry, who, by the way, has gone to the New Orleans Saints. And they have Donovan Peoples-Jones. They got Amari Cooper. They still got Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. They have some talent, and Deshaun Watson can still move. He can pass it, and he's got legs. This is going to be a tough matchup. A very good matchup. I can't. I'm, I'm honestly like like looking forward to this game, especially if if Deshaun Watson plays against him. There's no way Baker Mayfield is on this team by then. No, absolutely no way. Jacoby Brissett is going to be a yawn, snooze fest. But you bring in Deshaun Watson, you're going to draw some eyes, and make no mistake about it. Josh Allen is pulling out the receipts. He ain't forgot nothing. He's going to let the Browns have it in Highmark Stadium. Bills win. Big dub. You like that? I know you do. So by now, the Buffalo Bills, wow. Eight and two. Eight and two on the season. Entering Thanksgiving weekend. Ford Field against the Detroit Lions. We're going to wax it, <laughs> okay? I mean, I can't really talk about it. ain't really much to talk about. We're going to wax it, okay? Eat you some turkey. This game going to be over soon, okay? You know what I'm saying? Enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday. Thanks for coming out. Detroit, it's been real. God bless. Bye-bye. Big dub by the Buffalo Bills against the Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving. I'm not saying that now. Now, now, now hey, it could be a trap game. Could very well be a trap game, especially if the Buffalo Bills are sitting at eight and two in the season, and we're like Thanksgiving. But nah, that ain't that just can't happen, right? Thanksgiving, national TV, the Bills getting beat by the Lions. I don't see that happening. No sir, no. No, uh, give me a dub, nine and two, entering week twelve. Week twelve. Against the New England Patriots. December the 1st. December the 1st matchup. 
Is that right? Yeah. Thursday night game. Thursday night football. Excuse me. Thursday night football. In Gillette Stadium. I don't care where we play. Okay. I don't care where we play. The, 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 the New England Patriots put absolutely zero fear in me. I am not concerned about the Patriots. I think they are a team that is scrambling right now. Bill Belichick is, 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 is messing this team up. Mac Jones, we saw what Mac Jones could do, which is not a whole lot. Okay? Did they add some, some weapons, some talent? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Devontae Parker, yeah, uh, Tyquan Thornton, yeah. okay? Added a million and a half running backs, right? Ain't nothing going to change. Nothing's going to change. They're not running over the Bills. And let me just say this. This Buffalo Bills team is not going to be the same uh, defensive line as last year and years past. This defensive line, I fully believe, is going to be extremely stout against the run. Extremely stout. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say the Bills defense will finish top five in run defense. Top five against the run. Book it, baby. You heard it. Ref said it right now. Top five run defense in the league in 2022. You're not running the ball against Daquan Jones, Tim Settle, right? Ed Oliver. This is not happening. We ain't going to let that happen. No, not again. Not again. No, sir. We. Patriots, you're going to get, you're going to get, you're going to get your tails kicked. Okay. And your teeth are going to get kicked in. All right. It is what it is. On Thursday night football. Although, although there is some type of a trend against away teams on Thursday night taking L's. So I'm throw that out there. But I don't think we're gonna be that team. We could. We could. But I don't think so. I don't think the Bills want to. I think the Bills want to spare that type of embarrassment, especially on national television. I don't think we want to take another L on national TV like that. Prime time. So we got the dub against the Patriots. And that is what, week week 13? Right? So now we are. Man, if we're not if we don't have the number one seed Soto by now, I don't know what. I don't know what it's gonna take. All right. We've only got two losses. Oh my gosh, Mafia. Do I need to give us another one? We're entering week 14. We only have two losses. So now we're going back home against the Jets. Week 14, December 11th. That's, we're not losing that game, right? Right? I mean, we're not losing that one. Give me a dub. Bills on the East. The Jets are not beating us. We got a dub there. All right? And then now we've got another matchup, right? Because now here comes the AFC East stretch, right? Three straight. Now we're home against the, against the Dolphins on week 15 to be determined. We don't know. But there's no way the Dolphins are going to beat the Bills at home, right? Do I? Tell you what. No, I'm not going to give it to them. I'm, I'm not going to give the Dolphins a, a, a win here. I don't see it happening at all unless, unless somebody is injured. Knock on wood. I don't see the Bills losing against against the Dolphins. I don't. I think we're gonna sweep the East. Matter of fact, I just think so. I think we are. All right, so give me a dub right there. Oh my gosh, man, this is getting crazy. <laughs> this is getting crazy, Mafia. Dang, I did not expect this. I may have to sober up here and uh, and come back with another one. All right, now we've got our Christmas Eve game against the Bears. And we go to Soldier Field December the 24th, week 16 matchup against the Bears. I mean, really? You can consider this a trap game. If we're going to lose a game, let's lose this one, right? Right? If we're going to lose one, let's lose this one. NFC, another NFC loss. Right? It's not, gonna, it's not really going to hurt us at all. It may hurt our pride, but it ain't really going to hurt us. 
So should I give us an L against the, against the Chicago Bears? No. I'm not going to do it. You know, because we're a good team. And I'm not going to apologize for winning so many games. I'm not going to apologize for it. Doggone it. We're going to win against the Bears. Give me that dub. Mafia, come on now. Stand up. I know y'all feel me in this place. Smash those likes right now if this video is giving you any value. If you're feeling good about yourself. If you're feeling good about the Mafia. About how the Bills are going to fare in 22. Redemption. This season is all about redemption. Yes, you better believe it, man. I'm getting pumped up myself right now. Week 17 matchup, January the 2nd. January the 2nd, Monday night football, the Paul Brown Stadium against the Cincinnati Bengals. The defending AFC champions. A runner-up in the Super Bowl. Joe Burr and company. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. Man. Man, oh man. That team is talented. And they have gotten a revamped offensive line. They spent money, Jack, to improve finally the offensive line for Joe Burrow. So now he's not going to get destroyed in the pocket. He's not going to no longer be the most sacked quarterback in the NFL like he has been. So hopefully he's going to be healthy and that offensive line is going to do his job. So now you've got Joe Burrow on his feet with a better offensive line, Joe Mixon in the backfield with the talent that I just described to you, and Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. And that's his offense alone. Are we going to be able to match up against that? On Monday Night Football, man, so much pride is at stake. If we lose that game, if we lose that game, we really can't talk a lot. I know our record is still good. We're probably still the number one seed in the AFC by this time. But if we lose that game, I think it's going to have some type of effect on our psyche because, you know, last year we're talking about, I mean, hey, if we, host the, the, if we hosted the Bengals in the AFC Championship game, we were going to win. Can we beat them this year with those weapons? Man, they've, man, they've got some weapons, guys. I don't know. Man. This one's starting to really mess me up. Trey White, Kyer Elam, Teron Johnson. Against Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. I think we can match up well against them. We've got speed now, right, with Kyrie Elam. So Chase ain't going to be running. He ain't going to be running past Kyrie. He may run past Trey. He ain't running past Kyrie. Oh, man, it's going to be such a good game. Hmm. We don't want to do. Mafia, you let me know what you're going to do about that game. I, you know, I'm kind of leaning towards an L. I am leaning towards an L right now. It's going to be a tough one. But I'm not going to do it. I've got faith in my Buffalo Bills. I'm not going to do it. I wanted to. But I think we can match up against them. I think our defense can hold up against them, right? Especially now that we've got Kyrie. So now we've got shut down corners. To go along with our all pro safeties, assuming Jordan Poyer comes back. The revamped defensive line, Vaughn Miller, who added weapons on the offense that we've gotten, Josh Allen, I think we're going to win. It's going to be a close one, but I think we're going to win. Give me the dub. Give me the dub against the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday Night Football. Oh, man. And then we go and we conclude our regular season with a home matchup against the New England Patriots at Highmark Stadium. This is where I think we may take an L because, and only because, at this point, we're likely going to rest some starters, right? 
We're likely going to rest some. We, we've got the AFC East sold up. We're probably, if we don't have number one, if we're not the one, number one seed in the NFL, I mean, in, in, the, in the AFC, then there's something wrong. We probably have locked up the number one seed, so we're going to rest. I know we've got to, I mean, you know, assuming we've got the number one seed, we're already going to get that, 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 that first week bye, right? We're going to get that, that round one bye. But it's to, give this, it's to give us some additional rest, I think we'll rest some starters here. We may start them for like maybe the first quarter or so and then start, you know, letting guys go um, and sitting on the sidelines. And I think that we could possibly take an L here. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to give them an L. And it's not because the Bills are, are you know, it's not because the, the Patriots are better than the Bills. I just think at this time in the season, the Bills are going to rest some starters. And the Patriots are are going to be probably playing for something, playing for a, for a wild card spot. And they're going to, you know, they're, they're going to play against the, the Bills' second string team and pull out a, a pull out a win. I'll give it to them, okay? I'll give it to them. So the Buffalo Bills conclude the 22 season with a record, a record of 14 and 3. 14 and 3. I think that's going to do it. I think that will give us not only the East, but the number one seed in the NFL. That's what we're chasing, guys, okay? Uh, We have to keep that in mind. We've been chasing that number one seed for two years, okay? Because we want to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. No team wants to come to Buffalo and, and face us in January. They don't want to do that. So we can lock up the number one seed, look out. I don't care who it is, look out. You come into Buffalo, you better bring it. You better bring your big boy pants. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going down. So 14-3 and three is what I had the Buffalo Bills finishing this season off with. Assuming everything goes well, right? Injuries are, 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 are good, right? We, we remain healthy. I think this year the Bills are gonna they're, they're gonna play with their with with a purpose. Not not to say that they didn't play with the purpose, but I'm saying like they have that taste in their mouth still from from 2020 losing in in, in, in the uh, in the uh, in the AFC Championship game against the Chiefs, and then again against the division against the Chiefs in the division round last year. They have this taste in their mouths, and they're gonna come back this year on fire. I don't think there's gonna be a lull in the season. I think the Bills are going to be going with all c- cylinders, firing on, firing on all cylinders all year. I gave them a few losses here and there sporadically, but for the most part, the Bills are going to be dominant. Against a tougher schedule. Yeah, I know, against a tougher schedule, but it's all right. You know why? We're the Buffalo Bills. We have no reason to apologize for being who we are. No reason whatsoever. So let's get used to it, Mafia. Let's get used to your beloved Buffalo Bills being that top dog in the AFC. Because it's going to happen. And if we finish 14-3, and three, the number one seed in the AFC, man, oh man, you better get ready. Because I think we're going all the way. Super Bowl. Here we come. You feel me? Well, Bills Mafia, thank you for joining me. That concludes another edition of Rated Rev, brought to you by the Buffalo Fanatics Network. You guys smash this like. Let me know what you think in the comment section. You know how we do it. But until next time, as always, baby, grace and peace. God bless. And go Bills!